Are you ready to be stirred and receive an impartation of faith to move forward into all that God has purposed for your life? Welcome to the Stirring of the Waters podcast. I am your host, Elaine Haynes. I will be sharing what the Lord has given me through the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the Logos and Rhema words of God. Welcome to Stirring of the Waters, episode 11. I'm your host, Elaine Haynes, and today's topic is, do you want to hear God more clearly? You can, and he wants you to. You can learn how today. I have really been sensing that this teaching is something many are needing. I get emails from a lot of people, and hearing God is something everyone wants and needs. One of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 55, 3. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Hear and your soul shall live. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. You know, your spirit is what connects with God. We, our spirit connects with his spirit. We are one spirit with him, and that's how we commune with him. But our soul needs to be made alive. So that comes by hearing the word of the Lord. So this is something that's really been important to me in my life. You know, even as a child, <clears throat> I heard, I sensed things. And there's a lot of story. I've shared some of it with you already. Um, but this hearing was so critical to me. I was told I was crazy and I was shut down for many years. Because of that, I didn't trust um, my own thoughts, what I was sensing. Um, and, and I know that many of you um, who have been hearing have been told that. Um, at times, and perhaps there's other lies that you were told that have, or that you have gone into a belief system with the enemy, which I'm going to be getting into that later, that have caused you to think you can't hear. I'm going to be talking a lot about the blockages, what stops us from hearing, and some of them are internal belief systems, but again, that's a little later. So here, here let me just say this and for myself that I found. It's rarely an audible voice, maybe one hand. On one hand, I can tell you the times I've had an audible voice, many ways that God speaks, an impression, a still small voice, through dreams and visions, through a rhema word, sometimes from the Logos, that we're reading the word of God, and then it's it just like something is on it and really speaks to us, and that's the rhema word. And sometimes a rhema word is a word directly from the Holy Spirit. Um, through signs in your life, through others speaking a word to you, these are different ways that we hear again. And sometimes it's through our circumstances as we start to see patterns. We learn God's ways. He's trying to speak to us in our everyday life through recurring situations. He's trying to show us something. He's trying to teach us something. He wants to speak. You know, many times, you know, we, we don't realize that God speaks in symbols and types many times. It's not always a voice. So it's important to understand this. So some of what I'm going to be covering today are excerpts from my book, Moses Shocked in the Desert learning God's way so we can enter the promised land. So if you want more in-depth teaching on this, I highly recommend it because it will bring breakthrough in this area and many others. And one, big, the biggest breakthrough, and I'll share just one testimony. I've taught this from this book probably a dozen times at different venues. And my one of my favorite testimonies was from a man who was 89 years old. And through this this teaching, he was able to hear God for the first time in his life. And it changed his life, and his wife said it even transformed their marriage. We have got to hear God's voice for ourselves through relationship, and I'm going to be getting into that in a second here. So another scripture that I love that's so important and really speaks to my heart, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God is asking us, call unto me. So do you believe you can hear? That's a critical question. Do you believe you can hear? If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. He's your counselor, your teacher, and your comforter. Those are all speaking roles. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesus tells us in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So to hear, relationship is necessary. So you think about just that in the natural. <coughs> You've been born again for relationship. You were dead to sin, now you're alive unto God. You were restored to the place of oneness with him through Christ. That's what he desires, is us to be one with him, to be able to, to be our God and we are his people. 
He wants to communicate through us, and we do that through the Holy Spirit. Relationship requires listening and speaking. The type of relationship, the different types of, you know, we have acquaintances, we have very close friends, we have, you know, husband and wife, the ones that we're intimate with. Those are all different types of relationship. But the depth and, and intimacy of the relationship comes from spending time together, getting to know one another. You learn to tw trust that that person has your best interest at heart and you begin to open up to them about the deep things in your heart. That's what God wants from us. He, we can trust him with those deepest thoughts, those deepest fears, those deepest longings and grow in relationship with him and he will begin to show you those deep things that maybe you're not even aware of as they become, begin to become uncovered. So do you believe that you can have a relationship with God? You know, some people don't believe that. They believe that, um, you know, once you're born again, that now you're given a second chance and you have to create a good life for God. I used to think that. But we can't finish in the spirit, in the flesh, excuse me, what was begun in the spirit. You know, it took me a long time to, to understand that, that God wants us to depend on him every step of the way, that he has plans for our lives that we don't even know of. You know, we, we think we have things figured out sometimes, but we really don't. You know, we really don't know what he's bringing us into. Um, but the more that we have relationship with him, we more be, to get an understanding, we start to see how he's moving in our lives. And especially in hindsight, I think I talked about that in the last uh, session. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I'll just say this right out, flat out. God is not a respecter of persons. It's not a special gift. It's not a special um, calling to be able to hear God. Everyone should be able to hear God. The Bible is full of examples of ordinary people hearing God and doing extraordinary things. I'm just going to give you one of my favorite examples. Rahab, who was a prostitute in the Old Testament. First of all, Jesus comes from her lineage. So you know, let me just break that off of you. Um, if you feel like you're unworthy for any reason, worthiness has nothing to do with it. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But she heard things that the Israelites God did, and she believed. And then she heard instruction to protect his people. And I'm saying this, faith is the only requirement. Faith is believing. You've got to believe. You've got to be believed to hear. And her whole family, actually, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard, then faith came. So that's, you know, we hear, we have to hear. God wants us to hear. Faith comes by hearing. So through her, her whole family was saved. A really good example of relationship that God wants is Abraham. He's the father of our faith. So now he was called out by God. He heard God's voice. He came from a nation of pagan idolaters. They had multiple gods, the God of all these different things, okay? But he heard God's voice, the one true God. And he followed him. God said, come out from, from your people and where I will call you. He didn't say, where are you going? He just said, come out. And he, he, left, he left everything that he knew and went by faith. And that is, he's the father of our faith. And one of the things that God said to, about Moses, um, Abraham, excuse me, is, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Genesis 18, 17. That, that indicates that there was a deep relationship that they had, that, that God was telling him things ahead of time that he was going to do. And also, Scripture mentions three times that Abraham was a friend of God. So again, if Abraham's the father of our faith, he's our example. We're to be friends. God wants to be friends. I mean, Jesus even said that, that um, <clears throat> I no longer call you servants, for the servant not knoweth, knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father have I made known unto you. That's John 15, 15. So what is a friend? Abraham was called a friend of God three times, again, in Scripture. A friend listens. A friend holds you in respect, respect your opinions. They, you honor them. You trust them. A friend can ask you to do things, and you'll do it just on the basis of friendship, even though you might not really want to do it, but because they're your friends, you will. Our closest friends are those that are like-minded. They remind us of who we are when we're in our, having our day. We're having one of those days. God, our friends will remind us. They understand, you know, that we, and God understands that we have a flesh, that we have a soul. We have, things happen. We have feelings. But our friends remind us of who we are, and we can be open and honest with them. We're to take, Jesus said, to bring all of our cares to him because he cares for us. He's, Jesus said that he, who is God, he is God in the flesh. He said that he is the vine and we're the branches abiding in him. Without him, we can do nothing. 
He only did what he saw the Father doing. He only said what he heard the Father saying. This is the kind of relationship we're to have with, with the Father, with Jesus. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. That means you have to hear them. You have to keep them. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. This is an intimacy, an intimacy of relationship, oneness with the Father and the Son. That's continual communion. So there's an intentional intentionality that we can have with our hearing. It doesn't come just, you know, because we want it. You know, even if you say you just you just ask, you got to mean it. You have to really want it. You have to put thought. When you want to learn, develop in an area, you have to put your thought and study to a focused purpose. You put your will into it. And when you want to hear, you'll have an intention about it. You'll, you'll set aside time. You'll set aside, you'll set up priorities for that, spending time with God. And how important it is, Deuteronomy 8.3, and then Jesus reiterates it in Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is how we live. And in the Amplified, uh, Mark 4 and 24, in the Amplified um, version of Scripture, which what that person did who did the translation was she took from the original language, both in the Old Testament, which was Hebrew, and the New Testament, which was Greek, and she took the, in the, in the original language, she took the depth of nuances and many times the, um, the different words that were used in the original language that bring such so much more depth to the meaning of what is stated in the like the King James Version. So I'm going to read this to you. Jesus, what Jesus said, and again it's amplified, pay attention to what you hear. By your own standard of measurement, that is, to the extent that you study spiritual truth and apply godly wisdom, to that extent it will be measured back to you and you will be given even greater re ability to respond and more will be given to you besides. It's however much study and intent you put towards something, you're going to gain the most from it. And this is equally true with how much attention you give to spending time with God and hearing from him. And Revelation 3 and 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So there is hearing the voice, but then you open the door. So you give him space. You ask him to come in. You tell him, I want to spend time with you. So there's different types of hearing. There's just day-to-day -day hearing of instruction for throughout the day versus a desperation. So there are times when God speaks, when there's a specific and timely. There's times that God will speak outside of your seeking him. He will just speak a word to you because you need it right then. I remember one time, it's pretty early in my walk, I was driving down this street on the way to a meeting, 7 o'clock in the morning, and it was a pretty empty street, and I'm just driving, and I heard very, very clear, this was one of those audible times, stop, and I slammed on my brakes, and this car ran a red light right in front of me and would have T-boned me. That was a time when God spoke clearly for a specific need, a timely need. But then there was also the cultivation of intimacy that we do, we cultivate it where we can hear from him throughout the day. Paul said, pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean, you know, sit down with your hands folded all day long. It means being in continual communication throughout the day, receiving insight and instruction. Part of that is coming out of a place of worship, of intimacy, of loving God and desiring to be with him, desiring to hear what he has to say. There's deep things, even secret things that are puzzles to be deciphered. He loves to have us go deep and find those hidden treasures where he, you know, sometimes you'll hear, I'll hear a piece of a scripture and I'll, and I'll go there and then it's going to lead me to something else. And then it leads me to something else. And then it leads me to something else. And it's like, Oh my gosh, there it is. That's the rhema right there. So sometimes it's this little puzzling and I love how he does that. It's like a treasure hunt and I love treasure hunts. I love hidden treasure. So um, another important part to develop your hearing is praying in the spirit. We pray with our understanding and we pray in the spirit and I tell you, if you don't have a heavenly prayer language, ask for one, open your mouth and he will fill it. He says in, in Luke eleven thirteen, if you then being able know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So we pray in the spirit. Many times as I pray in the spirit, the answer comes sometimes right during the praying in the spirit, sometimes after insight revelation comes sometimes, you know, one time when I was, just praying or was really burdened for um, 
some things are going on in, in relationships in my family, not of me with them, but, but two others that were at odd with one another. And I was praying in the Spirit. God gave me a specific word, and I sent it to him by text, and it changed everything. So we, we need to be able to we pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, here's what he says in Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities or our weak places, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God, he will take your imperfect prayers. He will take your groanings in the Spirit. And he will interpret them and give them to the Father. And then he will pray according to the will of God in your situation. That is a beautiful, beautiful truth. So why? I gave some examples, but why do we need to hear God? To receive food and instruction. When you make a demand on the Spirit, there will be a supply. The reality is others' lives depend on you, whether you know it or not. You know, a lot of times in my walk, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't even press in for me, but I would do it for my children. And I can tell you over time, I can tell you this. When you grow and move forward, others that are connected to you will also advance. That's something that God does. It's a complete work of God. And you don't even have to be in the same zip code. Let's put it that way. You, but, but when you are, you're carrying an atmosphere of change and movement, life in the spirit, and others will desire that. It will stir something in them that God has put in them. You might not even be able to see it, but it stirs something in them because it's the spirit within them. So the biggest why is when you are be able to hear God's voice, you will begin to walk in his will. You fulfill your destiny that's ordained by him, his purpose for your life. It is critical that you be able to hear God. So what happens if you don't? What happens if you don't press in? What happens? You have crisis after crisis. Circumstances will cause you to turn to him. In Deuteronomy 8, 2, and 3, and Jesus reiterates it in Matthew 4, 4, and Luke 4, 4. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way at these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, actually to show you what was in your heart, show you what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He knows, but he's showing you what happens when you don't. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. Why? That he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So who or what are we listening to? Because there are many voices. We're always hearing something. You have your own voice, your fears, your your soul, your flesh. Your flesh has lots to say. Your soul, your, your natural mind, your emotions, all of that. The devil has lots to say too to keep you from moving forward. The world, there's the voice of the world, which is all influenced by the devil, but let's just keep it at the world. All the voices, the, the stuff on the internet, the chatter, the newscasters, all that stuff. The, the world system has a lot to say, trying to influence you to not go after the kingdom, which is what God wants. So we're always hearing something. What are you hearing? Who are you listening to? How to know his voice in the midst of all the other voices. He will never contradict his word. You have to know the word. Now, I know I shared in a previous podcast my testimony of how important the word of God has become in my life and why. I encourage you to go back and listen. I'm sorry I can't tell you which one it was because I don't remember. But the word is powerful. The word of God, Hebrews 4, 12 to 13. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The word of God will separate your soul from your spirit it will cause you, it will help you to realize your own thoughts, your own intents of your heart. It will show you the filter of your soul laid bare so that you can see your thoughts versus God's thoughts. And then you can begin to better understand his voice. You can see when it's yours. And by knowing the word of God, you can recognize the lies of the devil. Which leads me to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. 
which is something that we have to do. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you, I used to think that that obedience of Christ meant, okay, you know what the Word of God says, so every time I have these thoughts, these imaginations, or these devilish thoughts coming to me or whatever, well, what does the Word of God say? Now, that's important to know what the Word of God says. But let me tell you, see, I love to dig deep into researching what the original language said. Because translations sometimes mm, give you maybe a little, little different than what the actual um, original language said. I'll get that. And this is a perfect example. This word obedience, taking into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ in the original language actually means attentive hearkening. So how does that change this? Listen, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the attentive hearkening of Christ. What is he saying right now? I've got all these other thoughts, these imaginations. I've got these high things exalting itself, these doubts of God's word. I've got these other things that are coming against the knowledge of God. And I'm like, okay, so you take it into captivity. So wait a minute, I'm going to take that thought. Now, what is Christ saying? I got to listen. What is God saying right now about that thought? That's so important to understanding, to recognizing whose voice it is you're hearing. So one of the critical key points is to believe, to have faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a reward that comes from seeking him. He will reward you. What is the best reward you could have? Growing in relationship with him. Gaining confidence that he is for you. He's not against you. There are great and precious promises laid up for you that you begin to hear the Holy Spirit, speak a word in due season in your circumstance. You begin to be reminded by the Holy Spirit that God is with you always. He is leading you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to teach you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to inspire you and exhort you, rebuke you at times if necessary. I love being rebuked. You know why? I love when I'm chastened by the Lord. I love when he, when he, um, when he comes in be, and shows me something that where I was wrong in my thinking or in my doing, because at that moment that light pierces and I realized, oh my gosh, I wasn't even walking with him. I wasn't even hearing. And it, because when he brings a correction, he's in that correction and there's grace right then in that moment to move, to change, to shift. He's in it. So then he's with you and you recognize he's with you and you didn't even realize you didn't know you weren't. He wasn't with you. Anyway, I love when he corrects me. I love it. Don't be afraid of being corrected. Don't be afraid of coming to him. And let me tell you, hearing is not a special gift. Believe. I was a nobody. I was, I was in my mind the chiefest of sinners. I was the most unworthy to be able to hear God and walk with him. It is not a special gift. So he wants you to have relationship with him, to walk with him, to be like Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden, which means the ruach, the breath, to be that close to him that you hear his breathing, that you walk with him, that you hear his presence with you. There's nothing that compares to that. Nothing. So what do we hear? Sometimes we have filters. Balaam is a really good example of that. He's the one whose donkey spoke. He wasn't hearing God. He wasn't seeing. There was an angel right in front of him, but his ass heard it and saw it, his donkey. What happened with him? He had a flesh filter. He was in it for gain. He was a prophet. What he was hearing was, was warped. It was perverted because he had a desire for gain. What could he get out of it? And Jesus says in John 5, 44, how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God alone? So God will correct our heart issues, our flesh filters, I call them. And part of the way that we can do that though is what you mutter 
what your own words, because, you know, there's different ways that, that things enter our heart. Again, this is because of how we hear. We have filters, faulty filters, because of issues in our heart. Belief systems that we have that are actually in our heart. Um, when we have different ways things enter our heart through our eyes, through our ears, and through our own mouth. What we say goes in our ears and enters our heart. So we have an opportunity by what we speak out of our mouth that will now go into our soul, which hears our words, and it's either going to reinforce our wrong internal beliefs by the things we're saying, or it will challenge them by the Word of God, will challenge those internal beliefs, and it will transform us. As we continue to hear the Word of God spoken out of our mouth, going into our hearts, and it will challenge those internal beliefs that are in opposition to what God says, and it will bring us into a place of more acute hearing. So what are some of the blockages to hearing? I just talked about flesh filters. It's a religious spirit. It says, it's not for you. God doesn't want to talk to you. You're not worthy enough. You're not walking rightly. He's only going to talk to you if you're walking perfectly. And that's a lie. That is absolutely a lie. Faith, again, faith comes by hearing. And you grow in faith. As you grow in faith, then you're able to start walking more uprightly, let's just say. I mean, it comes from the knowledge that Jesus already paid the price for your sin. That's the first thing. He was made righteousness for you. There is none worthy except Jesus. Okay, but now he is in you. And he's going to lead you in the way of walking and, and coming up higher and letting go of all of those things that hinder. He's going to lead us in that. But there's a religious spirit that will stop you from hearing. It wants to stop you from hearing. It's a lying devil. And I'll tell you, a religious spirit is, is not just like a church thing, okay? A religious, religious is doing everything the same way over and over and over again. You do it religiously. Okay, we got to get rid of some of our patterns, some of our, our ways of thinking about what relationship with God is and what talking with God is. Be open and honest before him. Let it all out. You know, I journal and I write stuff down just how I'm feeling. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't, I just don't have it in the morning. I'm just like not even in the mood. I don't even like care. I write it down and it somehow just disappears and all of a sudden there I am wanting to have time with the Lord. You know, my own, it begins, he begins to counsel me. It's, it's like, I don't even know how to describe what happens, but I encourage you to do that. I hope that made sense. Anyway, sorry about that. Distractions, talking about distractions is one of the biggest hindrances that we have to hearing God. You know, many of our distractions come from our own uh, desires, the things we like to do. The things I've heard it said multiple ways, but that you know, if you want to find out what your idols are, it goes right along with our distractions, it is our preferences, our checkbook and our calendar. What do you spend your money on? What do you spend your time on? That's the those are the things, the things that we really enjoy. Those are the things that can be the most distracting. Now we've got other distractions that happen. We have interruptions. I talked about that the last time, that sometimes those interruptions are actually things that God is trying to bring, um, breaking up our routines. Um, he, he's doing something in the midst of it that's a whole other subject in a way but there are distractions our own mind causes a lot of distractions um, and we have to just press in past those set them aside and go past them but then there's the idols and again there's those preferences those those things that we that we want to do um, that are the usual ways we spend our time the ways that we nothing wrong with with having um, things that we enjoy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you want to hear, if you want to increase your ability to hear God, then you're going to have to make some changes. You know, because our days are full of things that we do. And something's got to give. If you want to spend more, if you want to hear it more clearly, you need to spend more time with Him. So what are the other ways that block us from hearing? Because there's a lot of other ways besides taking more time. Because you can take all the time in the world, but if you have some of these other ones, you're not going to go anywhere. I'll give you some examples. Unbelief is huge. Unbelief, thinking we aren't worthy. Now, I talked about that a little bit. That is a, an unbelief you don't believe you're going to hear because you don't think you're worthy. I already talked about that a little bit. Then we have unbelief because our circumstances have gotten our emotions all riled up. And our emotions are ruling us. And you cannot hear that still small voice when you're riled up with emotions. They're loud. What's become really important to me is staying in a place of peace so that I can hear. Because it's vital to my life to be able to hear God's voice. Then there's unbelief from rebellion. We don't want to hear. 
because God might ask us to do something we don't want to. Then there's unbelief because perhaps we've prayed and it wasn't answered the way that we thought it should be. So we stop listening. Internally, we might even start thinking that God isn't good or he doesn't care. But the reality is, because the devil is a liar, that God is always good. It just might not look like we wanted it to. God created us. He knows what ultimately will bless us. And I'm sure that if you have any kind of time with the Lord and walking with him, you have seen that many times the things that you have prayed for and thought you wanted were things that uh, weren't all that good for you. And it's how it's better that he didn't give you what you wanted. And you know what? Sometimes he will give us what we want. We have to learn from that. Because that's, for me, that was how many times I learned that, you know what? I can't trust my own desires and thoughts. That I became, you know, to that place of recognizing that God is the only all-wise one who knows the end from the beginning. And I can only trust him more than my own thoughts and reasonings. So another one is disobedience. The continual obedience is necessary for continual hearing. Perhaps you have stopped hearing because there was something he asked you to do and you didn't, and that's when you stopped. I, I um, strongly encourage you, if you're not hearing, to go back to what is the last thing he told you to do. So then there's also hearing that lie that it's too hard the devil is a liar because I'm telling you, it's actually harder not to. It's too hard to try to do life yourself with your own reasoning, trying to always trying to be figuring it out, asking other people to advice. Everybody's got an opinion. When, only, when God is the one, he knows, again, he knows the end from the beginning. He has a plan for your life. If he has the plan for your life, wouldn't it behoove you to get the instruction from him to fulfill it? What was begun in the spirit can't be finished in the flesh. We need his wisdom. So then there's the lie that God is going to keep us from having fun. So if maybe you don't want to hear because he might try to stop you from having, quote, fun, end quote. I'm going to tell you from my experience, again, the devil is a liar. And his idea of fun always ends up being in bondage. Death of health, death of finances, death of relationships, death of peace. He's a liar. God is not trying to keep you from fun. There is nothing more fun than walking with God because he is full of surprises and full of blessings, even things that you, beyond what you could ask or imagine. Then a huge one, which is this, is impatience. 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 Not wanting to spend the time yesterday because we're impatient. And especially in this culture, that when God is not a genie in a bottle, you're going to snap your fingers or blink, blink your eyes or rub your nose. And all of a sudden, there it is. There's this tyranny of this age that we have to instantaneous everything. We want our instant messages. We, we do a text to somebody. We get impatient if we don't get a response right away. You know, we have, we have, we, we spit off an email and we expect an immediate response. We get all upset. And I'm just saying, sometimes that happens to me. And, you know, we have fast food. You know, we stick the thing in the microwave and we want it to pop out. We get impatient with, with that. You know, and we begin to perceive we want God to answer our things right away, and it isn't that way. And relationships take time, and many times God wants to see if you really want Him or if you just want His hand of blessing. Now, let me ask you this Do you want to be in a relationship where the other person is only in it for what they can get from you? I don't think so. Well, neither is God. Then we have secret desires that we don't even want him to know about. We think he doesn't know. Somehow we think he doesn't know, which is ridiculous. But sometimes when we refuse to listen to a still small voice and continually say no because of our secret desires, the voice of the Holy Spirit gets dimmer and dimmer. We can grieve the Holy Spirit and we can quench him. And then lastly, fear of what he might ask us to do that takes us out of our comfort zone. And that is a big one. At least it was for me. And I can tell you, that there's nothing that satisfies like being one with him, walking with him, seeing him move in your life, seeing him move in other lives, others' lives through you. Take that step out of the comfort zone. He is with you. He will equip you in every good thing to do his will. Wherever, whatever, he is with you. 
He will give you the words to speak and the resources to accomplish his will. There is nothing as satisfying as continuing to be in a place of hearing his voice. He's that friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is your maker. He's your provider. He's the king of the universe. There is nothing that can stop you when he knowing that he is with you. There is a God-sized hole in your heart that only he can fill. And you can't get your needs met through other people to the extent from which only he can. What you're looking for many times is actually what only he can give. Because he created you. You are from him. You were created in his image. You came from him. You were in Christ before the world was formed. You were in him. The works that he's ordained for you were in Christ. That's the only way you're going to find that true satisfaction is in him. Everything that you have need of is in him. There is that place of such oneness with him that all you do is from a place of resting in his presence and his love. And there's nothing that compares to that. So I pray that you are stirred and that Holy Spirit brings illumination to every place that a mind-blinding spirit has kept you captive. If you've been in a season of trouble, of adversity, and affliction, here is a word of encouragement for you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk you in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. That's Isaiah 30, 20, and 21. So I bless you. And I pray that the Lord speaks to you as you seek him and changes your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Stirring of the Waters podcast. If you like what you heard today, visit ElaineHaines.com. That's A-L-A-N-E-H-A-Y-N-E-S.com for books, blogs, and spiritual growth. You can follow me on Facebook and subscribe at cpnshows.com, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. See you next week for the next episode.